Okay, so the first thing I, I want to say is it's it's hard to tell how things are attached. Like I think if I had to build this in real life with either styrofoam or actual metal, but if I was going to cosplay this, I, like I would know how to do that. I guess I could do this, but I, I don't know what it's attached to or how it works or where it's, is it supposed to sit on the biceps or the shoulder? I'm guessing the shoulder, but it feels a bit weird. This curved part is that leather and that might be a material indication thing, but it's the same color as this. So I'm assuming it's supposed to be some kind of metallic armor. So I think to begin with, there's a confusion. When it comes to gathering reference for your project, you know, we might be, you know, referencing real armor or other artwork. Like this looks like it fits into maybe World of Warcraft or something, but there's something I talk about in my class when I was teaching back at Art Center as well as CCS. But for example, this is actually more about rocks in, in this case. But if you look at most concept art paintings, they tend to have these kinds of just generic rocks, right? Like they could look cool for sure, but you and I both know it's it's pretty much in every painting in the concept art, maybe even the illustration world. It's all over here on the very far left. And so we could say that since that's what's expected, what's what we always see, it's pretty cliche or generic. It's not really anything new, which is fine. Maybe you, you want the, the landscape to seem generic so that other things stand out. I understand. What I want to, however, introduce as an idea is the fact that there's a range in any given subject, armor, belts, fur, helmet, shape design for faces, hair, anything has a full range from boring, cliche and generic all the way to interesting, unique, I should write that out, and unexpected. So here's just the full range of, as an example, with these rocks. As we move towards the right, they start to get a little bit more unexpected. Like look how these rocks are layered or the geometry that shows up in this, or maybe things are carved into it. And this looks like a petrified log or something. It doesn't have to be all these generic things, right? So if we go here towards the right, we have circles, or, or I'm sorry, spheres, more crystal-like things, but that's about halfway average towards things that are more interesting, because if we keep going, now we're getting into some really unexpected things, like hexagons with water in them, reflecting the light. Uh, although I've seen this in some paintings, because that's a pretty common, interesting rock to do, but if we go even further, like you wouldn't expect a painting with like broken rocks with these cool things on the inside, because that takes a lot of work to do and, and research and awareness to uh, do something like that. Or, you know, showing a, sh a bunch of rocks that are broken with fossilized uh, reliefs in them like that. Or we start introducing colors, right? And so there's so much you can do with just rocks alone. And to think that anything that you have in your character design, your, your painting, is going to have a range of possibilities. And it's your job as a production designer for your own work, because when you're doing your own portfolio, that's what you're doing. You're being a production designer, concept artist, researcher, illustrator, all for your own thing. If you find yourself trapped here with the choices that you're making for research, then it's not a bad thing. It's just something to be aware of. So when I go back to this, you know, I've seen that belt a billion times, this buckle, I mean. I've seen uh, this kind of hairstyle for, for I guess, dwarves many times, right? That doesn't mean that's bad. Maybe that's that person's design and it has to be that way. But what I'm trying to get at is let's see what else is possible. Now, I didn't exactly do a bunch of research or collect reference for this, but I, I happen to have this PureF board that, you know, I, I put together when I was making uh, paintings on Instagram for Elden Ring, uh, as those Elden Ring themed stuff. But, you know, I try to cluster a bunch of possibilities that feel interesting to me. And at the top, I have things like helmets. And as I go lower, we're getting more towards like the torso area and at the way bottom we're, we're trying to I guess showcase the whole body and so I would say do this reference exercise for every single thing in your piece I want to see like the whole range of what's possible with mustaches as well as braids I want to see the whole range of buckles and even the leather maybe you could find some belts that have cool engraving in it and, and and all that stuff. And it's like, what, what is this circle thing? I don't know, like maybe it's justified in the world that you're building, but I don't know. Every time I see an element here, I could also imagine a million different things it could be in terms of the range of generic to unique and interesting.
Okay, so let's say uh, we have a bunch of references that we potentially want to draw inspiration from. Now what? Well, it's it's like, do we just paint on top of the character and change it? Well, that's an option. But if, if you were my student, I would give you as an assignment is to do the following. Pick maybe five different references and do this practice. So basically, we bring it into here. Let's actually grab any of these really. And what you're gonna do is treat this like it's a sort of mannequin that you're, you're doing, a, I guess, costume design for. And for everything that you're seeing here, you're going to sketch onto your mannequin in a 3D way. So what I mean by that is I want to interpret all of these things as 3D shapes. So the first thing I, I see is that part of the, the pauldron, that shoulder armor. And I see that as a sort of disc shape like this. So you can kind of see the geometry like that. Now, of course, I'm exaggerating and making it much thicker. And it seems like it, it gets cut into. So let's go ahead and slice that part away. And that's sitting on top of another plate. And so the point of this is to get really good at internalizing the three-dimensional shapes of armor and how it actually sits on 3D geometry of your character. And so you can imagine that this piece of the armor does something like this. Now, when I'm doing this kind of study, I'm not trying to like copy like a you know, an academic measurement, uh, you know, one-to-one -one drawing. What I'm doing instead is interpreting the three-dimensional geometry. And so I can do a wireframe over it like this. So much so that even though this side on the right is covered, I could sort of draw it as a sort of reflection onto this side. Actually, let me get that bottom part real quick. So it's something like this, nice bit of thickness. And has this little lip like that, and it probably goes over. So I could imagine a center line here and it's reflected over it. And if you're having a hard time drawing in 3D in perspective and all that stuff, I would check out you know all the lessons by Scott Robertson, the how to draw a book from Design Studio Press, because that, that'll be really helpful for you. So over here on this side, I could start imagining the, the geometry, sort of like that. Uh, let's go ahead and draw this part. And sometimes you'd have to make up and invent like what stuff might look like if it's being covered. But if we have this much information, we have a lot to work with. For example, I don't exactly know what the other side of that piece of the armor is, but I can maybe put a little curve there or maybe a, a pointy part. Maybe I can cut into it like that. No wireframe will do something like this. And then you have this uh, smaller part over here and then like a lip that comes up. And then I notice um, it should be a little bit further out. But we can see that by drawing the three dimensional shapes, we're building as if it's, you know, 3D sculpt. And then you can layer things on top. But problem is if you don't know the geometry of the actual character, you can't possibly sit armor onto it and make it look good. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of things to practice, of course, to be able to do this. You might say, okay, well, we got something out of that. Oh, it looks like there's these uh, little pads over there that kind of sit on top of each other like this. And then you can draw it here. And it's not always uh, reflected in a symmetrical way, but you could say, well, all right, I borrowed some information from here. What if we throw something else into the mix? For example, chest armor area. It's kind of similar to what we have. Make a new layer and, and you just try to imagine the geometry of it. And I'm gonna mention that a lot because I really wanna drive that concept home. I'm not gonna draw this exactly because it's not gonna suit the dwarf that we have. So we're gonna change it up a little bit, maybe change the proportions, make that belt part a little bit higher and then have it go outward like this. And then we can just borrow the design for now. And then you can do whatever you want really. Um, and then, of course, the geometry is going to be following that as a center line. It's a little bit off from the original, but the wireframe, is good. I'm just going to do one side, is doing something like this, right? And you could see how very directly you can build all these different kinds of armor sets using this method. And of course, you know, all these designs that you see on this armor, you can even separate like a, a page of a bunch of these or you're just trying different combinations of, you know, engravings, reliefs, uh, carvings, or maybe some kind of uh, sigil or icon, right? And so every single thing that you have on your character design, you can do that with. And you should, if you're going to explore all the possibilities. Because when you're doing 
concept art, again, it's, it's not even a good name anymore. I think it's more idea design because concept art is so convoluted with illustration these days that we're mostly talking about idea design. And if you're going to be an idea designer for these projects that you're doing, you have to be aware that there's so much that every little thing could become. It's just a matter of iteration and expanding your reference library for what you actually do. And, and so I'd say, you know, grab your mannequin and, and do like 30, 40, 50 different possible combinations of these kinds of geometries of, of armor sets that, you know, you, you might find something completely unique. And I want to re repeat it again, that kind of treatment with the research, uh, sketching, iteration, that's with everything down to the bolts down to the type of cloth this is, whether it's leather or deer hide. And the question is, hey, what about efficiency? What about uh, getting things done on time? The more you do this on the right ahead of time, by front loading your, we'll call it homework or eating your vegetables, the more naturally and quickly it'll happen when you're actually doing your designs. So, you know, if you do hundreds of studies like this, when you go to do this part of your design process, you won't find yourself stuck trying to uh, get it right. Instead, it'll end up just being an exploration of, of different possibilities that will make sense for you.